Hi, Shane here. You're watching Sam for God. This is Mark. Check her out. So hi guys, how are you doing? Today I thought I'd do a little tattoo tour for you because believe it or not, I've got 17 tattoos now and every time one of you spots a new tattoo either in my videos or on my Instagram stories or just in my Instagram photos I always get a couple of comments from you asking me if I would do a tattoo video just explaining my tattoos and showing them and I don't know why I've been putting it off for so long I think I just didn't really realise how many I actually had and also I thought it was quite a niche subject so I didn't want to isolate those of you who don't necessarily care about tattoos because I'm very aware that not everyone loves tattoos but I obviously enjoy them and I did a poll on my Instagram stories a few days ago and the majority of you about 97% said that you do indeed want to see a tattoo video so here we are like I said I have counted them and I think I've got 17 and the best way to go through them is I think to just go in order from the very first one I got up until my latest one so yeah I'll talk about them a little bit maybe tell you how much they hurt and everything and tell you why I got them you know because most of them have some kind of meaning behind them I don't think tattoos should have meaning meanings by the way, it's just that my personal ones happen to all have some kind of meaning. So let's go! The very first tattoo I got is actually the one here um, on top of my wrist I guess. This one I can just show you because it's easy um, but I'll try and put a picture here as well so you can see it nicer but this is an outline um, of the Disneyland Paris castle. So there you go, it's now focusing. It's the very first tattoo I got, like I said, I got it about three years ago now and I thought about this one for about, I want to say, a month or two before I got it done. I've wanted tattoos since I was like 17 or 18, maybe even younger. But the very first tattoo idea that I had was always a star outline. Like, I always thought I want my first tattoo to be a star. And I thought that was kind of be it. I didn't think I would necessarily want too many more. But yeah, turns out my first tattoo ended up being an outline of the Disneyland Paris castle instead. I think once I got a bit older, because I got this tattoo done when I was 27, I'm 30 now. I realised that I want my first tattoo to just be a little bit more meaningful than a star. I mean, don't get me wrong, my star tattoo, I do have that as well. It's still meaningful to me, but I just wanted my first one to be a bit more special, a bit less generic than a star, I don't know. Anyway, I don't think there's much explanation for this one. I love Disneyland Paris. It's my home away from home. It's my favourite place in the world, I'd say. It's a place where I genuinely do feel like home, especially as someone who isn't necessarily from a particular place. Like, I'm a third culture kid. The country that I was born in doesn't correspond with the country that I'm from. My parents are from a different country, like everyone. I've, I've just, I'm a, I'm a citizen of the world. So yeah, Disneyland Paris means a lot to me. And this one didn't hurt too much. It only took about maybe 10-15 minutes and I remember thinking wow is this all the fuss that people make about tattoos like it didn't hurt at all but the reason it didn't hurt is because it was just an outline and it was very small and it was in a really good placement so there you go that was my first tattoo then the second tattoo I did end up getting the star I can show you this one easily as well um, this is my second tattoo there you go just a little outline of a star um, on my arm. I really wanted it in like this particular location. I know some people might think it's a bit of a weird location like if I stand here, I don't know. But the reason I wanted this star is because honestly ever since I was about 14 or 15 I used to constantly draw outlines of a star on my arms all the time Like I don't think there was any time in my life that I didn't have some kind of star on my arms The only difference is that because I'm right-handed normally my stars would be on my left arm And obviously the tattoo that I got is on my <laughs> right one But yeah, I've always loved stars and I think for me getting this star tattoo was like a nostalgic representation of my teenage years and growing up and being obsessed with stars and just constantly drawing them on myself. It was like my thing, like if I was bored in a university lecture, I'd just be drawing a star on my arm. So I wanted to commemorate that, I guess, and I do I do genuinely love stars and that's why I got it. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna mention the, the tattoo artist as well, I forgot about that. So this first one was done by Ben. I will leave all the links down below as well, their Instagram pages to the tattoo artist. And then this one was done by a guy called Nico at the same studio, Extreme Needle Tattoo in London. He was French, so we ended up talking French as well throughout the Session. This one took very like it probably took about 10 minutes as well, maybe 15 minutes. I do remember he was quite heavy-handed, so I could like it, it, it this one hurt more than my um castle, which was weird. And honestly, initially when I had it done, I wasn't fully happy with it. I thought it was just a little bit like not completely even. Like some of the lines I thought were a bit thicker than the others. So recently I actually got it retouched by Ben, who did this. So there you go. Third tattoo I got done is this uh script tattoo on my arm. Uh, you probably can't see it very well. I'm gonna again put a little closer up as well But this one basically just says everything in life is only for now and it's a quote from Avenue Q the musical There's a song in Avenue Q the musical called for now It's the very last song they sing in the show and I've always loved that song ever since I saw the show I kind of fell in love with that song. I think it's the lyrics especially they mean a lot to me They're, they're very true like I you know, obviously in my opinion everything in life really is for now You know nothing lasts forever the good times pass the bad times pass and I don't know I just really like the quote I wanted something 
something like that to kind of remember uh, especially when I'm down but also when I'm like happy to kind of just remember to make the most of things because even if I'm really happy sometimes or if everything's going really well for me I need to be aware that it won't always go well like there's always it's, it's a roller coaster life is a roller coaster and that's kind of what it represents uh, this one I got done by an artist called Patrick um, he's quite popular on Instagram actually and my friend recommended him to me and I fell in love with his writing style once my friend showed me his Instagram page because for a long time I wasn't sure what kind of script I wanted um, for this for this tattoo like I knew I wanted this but I just didn't know what script and I straight away was like this is the one once I saw Patrick's work this is actually also my only hand poked tattoo so this wasn't done using a tattoo machine it was hand poked and initially I was quite scared about the concept of it but honestly it hurt way less than using a tattoo machine and also it healed a lot easier as well so hand poked tattoos if you get them done professionally can actually be very very nice the next tattoo i got is by an artist called ayuri it was done at south market city tattoo studio in london and it's on my arm here again i'll show it to you from a distance but you'll be seeing it properly hopefully as well this is a lioness tattoo as you can see and the reason behind it is because i'm a leo my star sign is leo i've always related with my star sign like i've understood my star sign i felt connected to it a lot uh, everyone who knows me says that i'm very much a leo and lions have always just been like my spirit animals if that makes sense even with other things and quizzes and stuff like with the harry potter quiz i always get sorted into gryffindor which you know has a lion as their symbol so yeah i relate to lions i love lions i understand them and i very much am a leo like if you read the descriptions of what a leo is like uh it's very much me so yeah i love this piece a lot it's one of my favorite pieces it's obviously the first kind of bigger piece that i got and i was a little bit hesitant at first initially i just wanted like a geometric style lioness like on both sides but then Ayui's kind of style was to do half and half faces he was very happy to do just a geometric one for me so he gave me like a few options when I got there he was like I can do it like you want but also if you want to check out this version as well have a look and I spent honestly about 45 minutes kind of you know just trying to figure out what I wanted exactly and he was so so lovely one of the best tattoo artists I've ever worked with he honestly took his time he showed so many different things he didn't get angry or annoyed at me like size wise he was very happy to change it up and everything and eventually I was just like you know what I like the style you do like I don't have anything like this on me yet i had never imagined myself having something that is like a realistic portrait style thing if you know but it looked so cool that i was like let's do it and he did it and this one took like i want to say about nearly four hours i'd say which you wouldn't think because it's not necessarily very big but I think uh, the realistic style uh, uh, situation of the lioness just needed a bit more work because it's so detailed and he it was, a, it was a great experience it didn't hurt very much we chatted the whole time because it was on my arm I had my right hand free I could like you know text if I wanted to and like you know scroll on my phone and everything but I didn't even do that much because I was just talking to the guy like he was so nice it's the most I've spoken to a tattoo artist whilst I'm getting a tattoo done and obviously it was quite a long session as well and he was just so lovely like he told me about his life he asked me about mine a little bit his life was very interesting i like nearly cried at one point because he was just going out about some of his i guess some of his major struggles in life but also how he's been inspired by them and how he's learned from them and like his mentor and everything and honestly at the end of it he looked at his own tattoo and he was like i'm very happy with it and he told me it came out better than he even thought it would like he was so pleased with the outcome of it and he said that he thinks the reason that it came out so good was because the whole session he felt like so in the mood like in the zone and like the whole atmosphere the vibe was good and it was just really nice because it just meant that we very much clicked and and um, yeah, very much enjoyed that one. The next tattoo I got uh, was in October of last year actually, so it's about a year old now. It's on my leg, so you'll be seeing a little clip here right now. This is a tattoo of a ballerina doing the Nutcracker. The Nutcracker is probably my favourite ballet and it's one that has a lot of special memories for me because I used to work at the Royal Opera House and that was like my, my home for like a long time. I worked there for about nearly five years I'd say and I met some incredible people there. I made some really beautiful friends and I got this tattoo done uh, a couple of weeks after I left my job there. I guess I just wanted some way to commemorate my time at the Royal Opera House and that ballet in particular, the Nutcracker, because it was a ballet that would come to the Royal Opera House every year, every Every winter time it would come it was like the most prominent memory that I had in terms of ballets that I'd seen there and it's just so beautiful and yeah this was done by an artist called Cara Vanessa uh, this was the first time I traveled actually no it's not the first time I traveled I did have to go to Brighton for my script tattoo here but this was the furthest I guess that I traveled for 
a tattoo. I went to Birmingham for it and it was my first time getting tattooed by a female tattoo artist, which was nice. She was lovely. She wasn't very talkative and obviously I guess because it was on my leg, it's not like I could easily speak to her anyway. But the one thing I will say <laughs> is that this one hurt a lot. Like it's definitely my most painful tattoo or one of them anyway. Like I, that was when I realized it was my first tattoo on my legs and that was when I realized that leg tattoos 100% hurt more than arm tattoos. But yeah, it probably took about two hours max and yeah i really enjoy it now the next tattoo is this one on my arm it's the i guess the biggest one that you guys can see in my videos and it's the one that i probably talked about a little bit before as well i even vlogged uh myself getting this tattoo done so i'll leave the vlog down below if you want to you know if you want to check it out but um yeah this one was done by keely rutherford uh in london it's one of my favorite ones which is a good thing because it's one that i see a lot so thank the lord i love it you'll be seeing a proper picture of it here as well but uh basically this was an interpretation i guess of one of my favorite songs by my favorite band mcfly their song i'll be okay from their second album wonderland has been like a very special and motivational song for me ever since it was released but especially when i was a teenager when it first came out when i was about 15 16 this is like back in 2005 i was struggling a lot just with like the typical teenage life and yeah i would listen to it all the time on my way to school and you know whenever i felt down and it really helped me so i wanted to interpret that and what i actually did was i had this idea as to what i wanted because i didn't want to get just lyrics from this song i wanted it to be like an artwork and there's a line in this song that's like an overhead the skies are clear but it still seems to rain on you and overhead the skies are clear but it still seems to rain on you I really like that line because it very much resonated with how I was feeling as a teenager a lot of the times and also now as well I think you know whenever I feel down that's kind of how I feel I feel like everyone's happy and like I seem to constantly get a lot of negative things in my life like why why is that you know and I think that's a very universal feeling we all feel that way every now and again so that's what I wanted to represent and <laughs> I came up with the idea I want to say about three three or four months before I got it done I actually got my friend Marie she's an artist I was with her on holiday and I said hey I know this is really weird but like if I give you this little concept idea would you be able to like do a quick sketch so that I could see what it would look like potentially and she did a very quick drawing for me like we were literally having dinner one day and I saw the sketch so I just wanted to see if my ideas were like actually gonna work and it looked really cute and I was like Marie thank you very much and that's literally the reference photo that I took to my artist uh, Keely I sent her the reference that my friend had drawn and I was like this is what I want I obviously explained the situation as well like I explained the, the lyrics and everything and she came up with something that I really really love I honestly love it and I really wanted like the girl to be happy like even though it's still raining on her like the cloud and everything basically it was my interpretation of the song like I said as in like you know wherever you go you're attached to this cloud that's constantly raining on you and you can't escape it but I wanted the girl to be smiling because I wanted it to be like a powerful message like it doesn't matter if things constantly go wrong I'll still get through it like I'll fight through it and you know it'll be fine so yeah i guess it's one of my more meaningful tattoos that one sorry that i'm giving so much details by the way about all these tattoos but i think that's what you guys wanted and that's what most other people do that do these videos so anyway the next tattoo that i got this would be my seventh tattoo was the powerpuff girls i got them done on my leg again my other leg there was a particular like picture of the powerpuff girls that i wanted i mean there are so many cool powerpuff girls tattoos around the world but i knew that i wanted them from the intro of Powerpuff Girls when they first get introduced, like, din, din, du, 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 du. in fact, check me out on Instagram because I've just made a reel about that tattoo and I think it's quite a fun one. Anyway, the Powerpuff Girls is a show that I used to watch on Cartoon Network when I was very, very young. It brings back a lot of good memories from my childhood and also it was something that me and my brother used to do a lot and me and my brother used to watch this during a kind of slightly difficult time in our lives when like my mom was getting an operation done and we were kind of all over the place in terms of like, we had to be taken out of school from Iran for a bit, go back to Geneva, and then kind of come back and we were missing school and everything and like this is kind of the one thing that was like really good about that time period like we you know we you know, still had our fun and we still enjoyed watching cartoons we were kids at the end of the day but yeah I love the Powerpuff Girls I think they're really cute uh, my favourite Powerpuff Girl used to be Bubbles but honestly I think now it's either Blossom or Buttercup like Bubbles I don't think is very me anymore whereas when I was younger I kind of related to her kind of innocent sweetness but I feel like as I've gotten older, I'm not really that person anymore. Anyway, this was done by Rachel Baldwin uh, in Liverpool. So I traveled again for this one. Um, it was lovely. She was great. Uh, I didn't really speak to her much again, but I think it was because it was on my legs. I couldn't really do that. It didn't hurt as much as my ballerina, but it did hurt quite a bit. I think from my experience so far, again, the outer parts of your legs hurt more than the inner parts of it. I can't tell you why. I don't know the scientific reason behind it. And obviously everyone is different. But for me, every time I've gotten a tattoo on the outer parts of my legs, they have hurt more than the inner sides. It took about two hours maybe max and yeah 
that was it. My next tattoos are the ones that caused me the most amount of trouble, unfortunately. Now, these ones are on my legs, on my calves, uh, on the back of my legs, basically, and I've been wanting them for a long time again. I was so excited when I managed to book them with a tattoo artist that I've been following for ages, and I really loved her work, and I thought she was gonna be amazing, and honestly, her artwork is really good, and I love the tattoos. However, these tattoos ended up getting infected. Lord have mercy, like, how had I managed to go so far? You know, I'd, by this point, I had about eight or nine tattoos, tattoos and then suddenly two of them that I get both get infected it was horrible it was annoying it was scary obviously like I said by that point I already had quite a few tattoos so I was very familiar with how you need to look after them and like the healing process and everything and I took the exact same care of these tattoos if not more than I did with my previous ones because there was two of them they were on my legs I was very very careful with them super careful and yet they both got infected if you want to by the way I will make a whole video about that experience about my infection I guess tattoo experience because I think it might help other people. Obviously, thankfully, I'm fine now. Like, I had to go on uh, antibiotics and it was a stressful two or three weeks, but my GP said that um, he thinks, even though he didn't want to, like, necessarily say it, that's for sure because you can't know for sure, but he said the fact that both of my tattoos got infected and they were on different parts of my body, like, they were on two separate legs, he just said his guess would be that it was something to do with the studio or, like, the artist, you know, maybe, maybe being too heavy-handed or something like that because if it had been something that I'd done, it would have been unlikely that both of them would get infected at the same time, you know? Again, I don't mind. I, I'm very much aware that infections can happen. You literally have to sign a little form when you get a tattoo done to say that you're aware that infections are a possibility. But what I didn't like, and that's why I'm not going to name this particular tattoo artist, is the way she responded to my concerns. Like, when I first thought that something was wrong with these tattoos before I'd even booked to see my GP. I messaged her very, very nice. Like, I didn't blame her or anything. I was just like, hey, how are you doing? Like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm still in love with my tattoos, but I'm a bit worried about these, blah, blah, blah. And she was just very patronizing in her response. So I wouldn't recommend this tattoo artist, unfortunately, even though her work is really good. But like I said, if you want a full video on all this, I will make one and talk about it a bit more in detail. But I will say that they did hurt quite a bit, and obviously, because there was two of them. Uh, joy and sadness from inside out. It took quite a long time as well. I was probably in the studio for about four hours, uh, two hours for each leg, and <laughs> they were very painful. The calves hurt like a lot. The back of your legs, Lord have mercy, especially if you get done something big. Like obviously, if you just get like a small outline of something on your calves, I'm sure it'll be fine. But to get like two big kind of pieces that are basically full color, I mean, I know this wasn't colored, but I mean, it still had some grays and it was a lot, a lot of shading and everything. It, it hurt, it did hurt. And also I forgot to say the reason I got it done is because I love it. Inside Out. It's one of my favorite Pixar films and Joy and Sadness. Two of my favorite characters and when Inside Out first came out back in 2015 I think five years ago now. Wow. It came out a time that I kind of needed it like I learned a lot from it I know it's like pretty basic stuff It's just kind of talking about how sadness is equally as important as happiness And you know you shouldn't be ashamed of being sad or you shouldn't suppress your sadness constantly But that that's kind of what I was before that like in my early 20s I was very much like a very happy person I wanted to constantly present myself as a happy person if anything negative happened I was like no, I don't even want to think about it everything's great like life is phenomenal but it was around that time that i realized that like no you, you need to deal with your sadness like it is important you can't just suppress it and just pretend that everything's okay so for that reason that film means a lot to me to this day the next tattoo i got is also on my leg but on my right leg uh and this was done by lemat uh tattoos i think that's what his username is on instagram um this was done in london and it's meant to be hedwig kind of holding uh the little letter for Harry to kind of invite him, I guess, to Hogwarts. But at the same time, I didn't want it to necessarily be very, very Hedwig-like, if you know what I mean. I wanted the detailed work that Lemat is known for in the owl, and I am so happy with how it came out. Like, I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite pieces. I think his work is phenomenal. I'm actually gonna be going back to him very soon for another tattoo because his black work detail is in insane. Like, I love this owl so much, and I'm really happy that it doesn't scream Harry Potter, if you know what I mean. Like, this makes the owl more personal to me. Like, it's almost like it's just my own owl and it could be that the, the envelope of the letter is for me to go to Hogwarts not necessarily Hedwig uh, coming for Harry. This one took about an hour and a half I want to say didn't hurt too much which I was surprised at considering my ballerina on the same leg had hurt a lot but I guess it also depends on like people's experience and like how heavy-handed they are and everything in the exact location but yeah I loved it. It was a great experience. I was really scared, obviously, because like the, the tattoos that I'd got just before were the two that got infected. So I like I took about, I don't know, two months off from getting tattoos and I actually had to delay, postpone this tattoo. I was originally meant to get it not long after I got Joy and Sadness, but I messaged him and I was like, I'm really sorry, like I've got this infection now, so can we postpone it? But yeah, uh, thankfully everything went absolutely well with it, healed absolutely fine and 
I love it. Next tattoo I got is one that I got just before lockdown. And I, uh, this is probably the most spontaneous tattoo that I have. I was scrolling through Instagram like I always do and I came across this tattoo artist whose work I basically straight away fell in love with. He's quite popular, again he has quite a lot of followers on Instagram, Woozy Tattoos, Woozy Machine Tattoos, I think that's what his username is. But again, like I said, they will all be linked down below. He's based in London and he does a lot of like, I don't know, funny, cartoony, sarcastic, just kind of weird, hilarious tattoos. It's a style of tattoo that not everyone's gonna be into, obviously, but those who are, love it. You know, it's got a very specific niche fan base, uh, that style, and I like that style as well. So I remember seeing his work, like I found him on Instagram, and then honestly, within about a week, I'd booked a tattoo with him. I literally went through his like whole Instagram uh, feed more or less and looked at uh, almost everything that he'd ever done and then I saw one that I just fell in love with and the only thing that I wanted was for him to change it to two women. So you can see the tattoo here. It's basically uh, two girls uh, and one of them's telling the other one, it's okay, you're just a tattoo. I just thought that was hilarious. I know some people might just be like, that is such a stupid thing to put on your leg, but I don't care. I love it. Like my, my dad really hates this tattoo. So does my mom actually. It's probably their least favorite tattoo. They both just say it's, it's dumb, like it's stupid. Like why would you do that? But it makes me happy, you know, it brings me joy and to me, it does have a bit of a like meaning as well because I think it's a nice reminder that like it's fine like everything will be okay like it's okay I mean obviously unfortunately I'm not a tattoo I have feelings I have a full-on life so life is more difficult for me than it is for this girl on my leg who's just a tattoo but I like the message you know take a bit what you will uh, this one took about 45 minutes not long at all and um, he was lovely um, the guy who did it and very friendly and yeah I enjoy it. The next tattoo I got done, I was originally meant to get done in April of this year, but then obviously lockdown happened and everything, so I had to postpone it, and it was my first tattoo post-lockdown. I went back to Keely Rutherford, who had done this tattoo on my arm, and again, this is a tattoo that I've been thinking of getting for like six months or so prior. I messaged her um, with my idea. Keely's really good at just kind of giving your ideas to, and then she just makes it into this really, really cute design. So yeah, I gave it to her, um, and I basically wanted uh, an alien, an alien playing the piano, um, wearing mini ears, and uh, the piano has like a sticker of one of the green aliens from Toy Story on it. It's kind of meant to represent me, if you know what I mean. But yeah, without getting too deep with her, because I don't necessarily feel comfortable doing that, I think it's pretty obvious that like I play the piano, so this alien is also playing the piano, I and mean, I love Disney, so the, the mini ears are there, and you know, Toy Stories there, the aliens. And I'm not gonna say too much about it at the moment, but it's one of my favorite pieces for sure. Um, Keely's very fast, so honestly, even though it's quite big, as you can see, um, it took maybe just over an hour and it didn't hurt too much. Again, because it was on the inside of my leg, I just think that part doesn't hurt as much. And she's just so lovely. She's one of the sweetest tattoo artists I've uh, worked with or I've had work done by. And it's one of my favorite pieces. And she, again, exactly got what I wanted. Like, you know, my what I had explained to her in the email and everything is exactly what I wanted, even better. And I'm so pleased with it. In that same tattoo session, um, I also asked Keely if she would mind uh, doing another small tattoo for me as well. I didn't ask her like there and then I emailed her a few days before saying, by the way, I know we've only booked for this one tattoo, but is it okay if I ask for one small tattoo as well if we have time? And she was like, yeah, absolutely. And so I got um, a little balloon on my right arm with the number 29 in it. The balloon is attached to uh, a present. A lot of people think it's an Animal Crossing tattoo, but it's not. I've never played Animal Crossing. It's quite similar to the Animal Crossing like balloons though. I, I understand that, but I don't even know what the Animal Crossing balloons are for. Anyway, the reason I got it was because this was, like I said, I got this these tattoos done kind of just after we came out of lockdown at the end of July and my 30th birthday was approaching back then and I was feeling very weird. I think a lot of us were. I mean, for me, I had a lot of plans that I was hoping to do before I turned 30. Like 2020 was meant to be like an amazing year for me, the first half of it. Like I wanted to cram as much awesome things into it as, as I could before I turned 30 and obviously I didn't get to do any of them because of this, you know, situation that way in this pandemic and I don't know I just I think it, I, I don't know I can't, it's really hard for me to explain this tattoo but believe me this one actually does mean a lot even though it might not on the surface people might just see it and be like oh it's just a fun tattoo it's probably one that means the most to me again I like the fact that I got it done when I was still 29 because you know it's number 29 but also that's not the reason I got it done like I'm not just gonna get a tattoo of like a random age that I once was the main reason is because my birthday is on the 29th of July so my birthday is never gonna change you know, I'm always going to be born on the 29th of July. I just thought it was apt 
to get that done uh, because it was my birthday like kind of signifying me turning 30 but also i got it done when i was still 29 you know it's, it, it makes sense to me so there you go that one hurt a little bit more actually i think even though it's really small i think again because it was on the outside of my, my my leg and maybe also because i'd already done a tattoo that day so i kind of was already a bit like ah uh, my body was a bit like ah uh, this is a bit too much sound but yeah I like it. Keely did a really good job. For my next tattoo, I went back to my very first tattoo artist who did this, and that is Ben uh, at Extreme Needle Tattoo. I randomly realized that I wanted this little quote that says, Just imagine, just imagine. Just imagine uh, on my right arm, which uh, this one again, I can just show it to. Let me try and do this. Um, yeah, as you can see, it literally just says, Just imagine um, on my right arm. And it's in my own handwriting. This isn't like my, my normal regular handwriting, if you know what I mean. Like, uh, it's just I wrote this. Like, I can have different styles of writing if I want to. And I thought this one looked nice, so I wrote it myself. I wrote it so many different times, honestly. Like, when I got to the studio, I was just like, I need to make sure it's as perfect as possible. And Ben was really good. Ben gave me about, like, 10, 15 minutes. He gave me some papers, and he was like, just write it. And then choose, like, maybe your top three or something. And then he came with me, sat down, and we had a look at them. And yeah, he, he seemed to be happy with this one. And he did a phenomenal job. I think his line work, honestly, is so good. And he said, in particular, he's very, like, special about trying to make handwriting or script tattoos look as similar to the real writing as possible. Like, even if, like, like there's a bit that, like might not have had as much pressure on the paper he tries to present it the same way in a tattoo which i think is so cool because he could have easily like made it more perfect but i didn't want that and he didn't either and i think that's just that makes his artwork really really special ben's actually mainly specialized in like japanese traditional artwork but that's not really my style so i'm very happy that i can go to him for little small tattoos like this and this and there's another one that's going to come up in a bit as well my next tattoo is again a tattoo that i had originally booked to get done uh throughout lockdown, like doing lockdown, I think I was meant to get it done in May, and this was done in Brighton, uh, Top Boy Studios, the same place that I went for this one. This is on my leg, and it's by an artist called Mike Stout, who I've been following on Instagram for like over a year now, and I adore his work, like honestly. It's very rare for me to find an artist whose work I love so much, that like almost everything they post, I'm like, oh my god, this is beautiful. But that is Mike for me, everything, every photo they post, every tattoo that he does, even if I don't care about the subject matter that he posts, I'm like, wow, it looks amazing anyway. Future I think me has just come to say the reason I got the uh, balloon, the hot air balloon with the globe uh, or the earth, planet earth I guess as the balloon is uh, kind of to represent the fact that I don't really feel like I have a particular home. I don't feel like I'm necessarily from any particular place in the world. I'm very much a third culture kid. Like I said, if you want to Google what that means, do so. Um, but basically it just means someone who's grown up in like three or four, more than three or four different countries. And so I feel like it represents me a lot. It's how I feel. I feel like I'm not from any particular country or city. I feel like I'm literally a citizen of the world. And that's why I wanted uh, this idea. And like I said, Mike did a phenomenal job. So yeah, I was so pleased to finally manage to get this done. He specializes in like illustrative black work tattoos and he's such a phenomenal artist and also such a lovely guy. Like I didn't expect him to be as friendly and lovely as he was. I think it's just one of those things when you see artists who are, he's po quite popular as well. Like he's got quite a lot of followers on his Instagram. You expect them to kind of maybe have a bit of an attitude maybe or just kind of feel a little bit superior to you. But no, he was so friendly. He made me feel so at ease. I would say he's probably the best tattoo experience I've had like throughout from the start to finish from the moment I got to the studio until I left it just felt so relaxed and yeah he was very professional even though he was he was working on my leg we still managed to chat a bit throughout the session his work is so detailed like I could tell again how much he actually cares about his work and his customers honestly I can't rate him enough guys if you want to get a tattoo done that is in his style definitely go to him you won't be disappointed we've only got two tattoos left now the next tattoo that I'm gonna talk about here is one that I got on my shin, I think, or kind of on my shin, on the front of my leg. You can see a picture of it here again. I got this done about a month ago now on the 28th of August, so it's one of my more recent tattoos. In fact, it's like the most recent big tattoo piece that I have. This is an idea that I've had for about a year and a half. Like, I've been wanting this design, like this style of the design for a long time, but for the past year or so, I've just been trying to find the, the, the right artist for it. And I've been following Danny's work for ages on Instagram, and I just never thought that I would ever get anything by him. He does a lot of traditional work, like you can see, but also he's just very popular, and and I just didn't imagine myself ever being able to kind of secure a time with him. I don't know. I don't know what it was. He just wasn't someone that I was kind of thinking of getting a tattoo by, if that makes sense. I just followed him because I really enjoyed the artwork. And then, I'm not going to lie, for a while, for about six or seven months prior to this, I was trying to get this idea 
um, done by another tattoo artist and I messaged this other tattoo artist twice and I never heard anything back from them. I don't know if it's because maybe their books weren't open or I, d I don't know, but I decided that like enough was enough. I'd messaged them, I'd emailed them twice. It wasn't even messages, like I'd actually like emailed them properly and like I'd gone through the process very nicely and I saw that the other tattoo artist was like, they were still taking on clients from like what I could tell. Um, on their Instagram page and I decided that like clearly they maybe just aren't interested in this idea I did think it was a bit rude that they never replied because they could have just easily replied and said sorry not something I want to do or something like that you know what I mean but anyway I took it as a hint and I was like just let, let go of that artist and find someone else and I'm so glad because once I realized that Danny could also do the statue and probably even better I tried to book a session with him and he his books are honestly normally very very full but thankfully for me because of this global pandemic he has a lot of like last minute cancellations and stuff because a lot of his clients seem to be international clients like he's honestly such a popular well-known artist that people are willing to travel from other countries to London to get tattoos done by him and obviously because of this whole quarantine thing and like every week there's new rules and different governments are like you can't go to this country or whatever some of his clients have to cancel uh, on him last minute and thankfully I live in London in the same place that he tattoos and I managed to get one of his cancellation slots and went to him and I love this piece honestly I would probably say it's my favorite piece Piece that I've had so far but then again I always say that about my most recent tattoos but yeah he smashed this tattoo like it is beautiful again he himself after he was finished tattooing he looked at it and he was like wow like I, I I'm really happy with this like I'm super happy with this these were his exact words he said he was super happy with it and that means a lot to me because it's always nice when a tattoo artist himself is happy with their work like that happy if you know what I mean and he put the picture on his Instagram and everything and I've shown it to a couple of my friends so far not many people know about the tattoo yet honestly because it is is quite a recent one I think I've only sent it a picture of it to maybe three or four of my friends and they all seem to love it and recently about a week ago my mom finally saw it as well and my mom's not the biggest fan of tattoos generally but she looked at it and she was like yeah that is done really well like I can see that you know whoever did it for you is a phenomenal artist like the shading and everything because my mom's an artist herself all the pictures like not all of them but a lot of the things that you can see behind me are like you know painted by my mom it was really nice that even my mom could kind of see the artistry in this tattoo and how well it was done future editing me has come back to just explain very quickly why i got uh the lovely beautiful girl with the theater mask tattoo that i'd been wanting to get for about a year or two i think the reason is pretty simple i think you can kind of see what it means just by looking at it but it's kind of meant to represent me. Uh, I mean, I love theatre, so I really wanted the element of like the theatre mask in this tattoo, but also all my life, uh, especially the, like the first 25, 26 years of my life, I've felt that I, you know, I have this like happy persona, like this positive persona, and everyone sees me as like this very, very positive, happy person who's constantly looking for the best things in life, who's always happy and, you know, never sad. Um, and uh, this was like a, my own personal problem as well. Like I said, it was something that I used to struggle with because I thought that I needed to be that. So I kind of presented myself that way because I didn't want anyone to see the real me or see that I you know I can be sad as well and so I think it was just kind of to show that I wanted a portrait like this I like the imagery of it I like the idea of it and like I said Danny did a phenomenal job he even added a little tear uh, on the girl's face so like she's been crying kind of thing I never even said that to him when I was explaining the tattoo idea I just said I want like a sad looking girl behind a comedy theatre mask and he was like, yeah, you know, what do you think? Should I, do, do you like the idea of like having a little tear as well? And I was like, yeah, let's do it because it makes it, you know, even more beautiful. But yeah, that's the meaning behind that one, I guess. It's very much me. It took about two hours, I would say. Um, it hurt a little bit at times, but it definitely wasn't as painful as the sides of my leg or the back of my leg. So I think shin's normally a lot easier than like other parts of your leg. Danny was lovely, you know, he's from Spain. I've been learning Spanish for the past like seven, eight months, so I tried to speak Spanish with him for a little bit, but I'm not very good, so I failed at that very quickly. But he was really nice. He, yeah, I, I cannot again recommend him enough. And I'm kind of gutted that I already have this piece now because I low key want him to just do everything on me because he was, his work is insane. And then the last one, <laughs> wow, I feel like I've been talking for ages. Sorry that this video is so long, but anyway, the very final tattoo that I have, um, I got it done. I'm to say about two weeks ago now and it's on my right leg just uh below my sadness tattoo and it's just the words dabba d if you could even call them words four points if you can guess what that means and where it's from but i'm going to give you three seconds before i tell you the reason so one two three dabba d is from <laughs> the 90s song i'm blue dabba d dabba die 
you might think this is a stupid tattoo to get i disagree i love it i again knew that i wanted this little three words on my leg for about two or three months before i got it done the song means a lot to me uh and it brings me back to my childhood and also i just i love it you know i love the color blue i also love what it means like basically i'm blue is about being sad and not that i'm saying i'm necessarily very sad right now but it's it just really it goes well goes well under sadness you know i think it's funny it's something that not everyone will understand but also i know what it means it's it's got personal meanings as well that i don't want to get and dive into too much but i like that it's not a very obvious tattoo but at the same time it, it flows with the leg with the rest of the leg so dabba dee dabba die but yeah that is the end of the video guys i hope you enjoyed it let me know in the comments uh what tattoos you have or maybe if you don't have any tattoos yet tell me if there are any tattoos that you particularly would want to get one day or just ideas and maybe any of my tattoos that maybe you like i would love to hear which ones were your favorite potentially and yeah that is it follow me on instagram if you haven't because you'll be able to see more of my life and i will see you in the next video bye